Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on Midday Live. I am Wendy Lai. Coming up this afternoon... Chief of Staff, Akosia Fema Osei Opari admonishes Guineans and the media against the use of unsavory language. And on the international front, North Korean senior diplomats dismisses possibility of inter-Korean talks in protests against South Korea U.S. military drills. Let's start with our stories now. And Chief of Staff Akosia Frema Oseo Pari has admonished Guineans and the media against the growing use of unsavory language in the country. Speaking at the launch of Social Democratic Forum, a campaign on hate speech by Police Sergeant Daniel Kwesi Oforiapia, she insisted the development, if not checked, could derail Ghana's democratic gains and disturb her peace. Please, I don't really care. Every time I meet him, yes, I will not come on this program if this silly boy is going to be there. Hate speeches, unsavory comment, abusive languages, discriminatory utterances, insults, and petty disagreements have now dominated the airwaves and even in some churches. Chief of Staff Akosia Frema Ose Opari noted Ghanaians must rise up and speak against such tendencies before it destroys the country. The idea of think right, speak right, and therefore act right is a value that we should all have. What you say can affect many things. To use our language in a positive way to enhance national development and peaceful coexistence. She was addressing the launch of a social democratic forum, Watch Your Tongue, in Accra. You should watch what you say. You can be very provoked, but I will say that don't follow the person who has provoked you. Have some more sober uh, replies rather than to measure the provocation with your encounter, even more venomous statements. The peace campaign by Police Sergeant Daniel Furiapia, dubbed Pleasant Words, Safe World, is aimed at highlighting the negative effect of bad utterances on people and the society at large. Think right, speak right, write right and act right. We are going to do vigorous educational activities to augment the NCC mandate through our four and three core values and focal points respectively. The campaign focuses on three thematic areas, human utterances, human actions, and the use of social media. By our Adamic nature, we are prone to pointing accusing fingers at others when we all as citizens have a collective responsibility to guard against abusive and offensive words. Indeed, political leaders and their followers have a greater responsibility because to whom much is given from him or her much is expected the launch was chaired by the chairperson of the national peace council most reverend professor emmanuel asante our politics should be issue driven rather than vitriolic attack on political opponents our reputation as an oasis of electoral peace and democratic stability in the sub-region can hardly be sustained in the context of politics of insults. He urged journalists to be mindful of the choice of words in their reportage, as well as those they invite on their platforms to avoid creating needless tension in the country. To other stories, now the National Deputy Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, Gifti Ampabli, says the current work demand placed on teachers in basic and senior high schools is taking a toll on their health. She was speaking at a training workshop for teachers at Chebi in the Eastern Region. The National Deputy Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, Gifti Ampabli, explained 
The workload on teachers is taking a toll on their health. We do apologize for that, Hitch. We'll bring you that story later. But we move on. And the new Jabbing North Municipal Assembly has committed most of its revenue and funds into garbage evacuation. Several communities under the newly created district have piles of uncollected garbage. Municipal Chief Executive Comforter Sante has assured all refuse in the area will be collected by the end of the year. New Jabin North Municipality was carved from the New Jabin South Municipality a year ago. Several communities in the municipality have battled with heaped up garbage for years. Resources generated by the assembly are being spent on evacuating garbage to make communities clean and change their old ways of refuse disposal. Jenfi Krum, Debiasem, Efudiasi, among other several communities, have had their garbage cleared. That of Jumapo and other communities are yet to be cleared. Council for this Zoom line for them to sub all a few man ten man temono. Omo bana contain an eye ma. Is there some back of every full frono? No much here go form. When the bean is full up, instead of them to take it elsewhere, they rather dump it on the floor, which encourages other residents to do the same. The council should utilize the money we have been paying. Mosha, I dare some of this can, and yes, some of this can. Bole, which was here, she had a bole. It is very difficult for us to breed due to the stench which emanates from the waste. We appeal to the government to rescue us. She was hopeful by the fourth quarter of the year, all the other heaps of refuse will be cleared. The new job in North Environmental Officer Daniel Darko noted persons who indiscriminately litter and flout environmental bylaws will be prosecuted. Once we get the city cleared, anybody found throwing things about must be penalized. And, and before we do that though, I have sent the ISD, Information Service Department van, to sensitize our people and let them know the consequences of their action because it is unacceptable for indigents or people to be throwing uh, garbages on the street and stuff like that. He added, the assembly will partner private operators to help in waste collection and disposal. More on sanitation stories this afternoon and whereas most lorry terminals in Accra are grappling with waste management challenges and vehicular and human congestion, the situation at the Achimota new station here in Accra is different. Management's other facility called J Limited attributes the situation to the banning of trading activities. The 800 capacity terminal was inaugurated in 2009 to decongest some major terminals in Accra and also serve as a transit point for long distance buses. It is currently managed by a private company. The surroundings at the terminal are clean with beautiful landscaping, a clear departure from littering, filth, and uncollected waste at most bus terminals in Accra. Trading and hawking are not allowed inside the facility. All such business activities are conducted at the entrance. Hence, the situation where hawkers and traders compete for space to sell their wares is absent. Management at the facility spoke about other measures put in place to maintain the place. The one that the contract was given to us, we started by educating the drivers' union, the drivers themselves, the mates, the sellers, that's those who are operating canteens here, we educate them that we don't want to keep the place very dirty. We have cleaners who make sure that they tidy up the place periodically. Over 80% of the traveling public in cities use some form of public transport. City authorities and key stakeholders must hence act to tackle waste management challenges at various transports and lorry stations in the country. To more stories this afternoon, World Vision has drilled a borehole for residents of Kunda Junction in the Krachi East Municipality of the Oti region. Now, residents who relied on the river for water have had to struggle half a year when the river dried up. Peter Kwao Adato visited the community and has come through with the following report. <laughs> <laughs> Kunda Junction is a farming community with over 600 inhabitants. The only source of water for the people is River Prake, 
which provides water only during the rainy season between June and November. The river dries up completely between November and May. We were told the men will have to create hand dug wells inside the riverbed to serve as a source of water. But these come with additional challenges. The women will have to wake up at 3 a.m., wade their way through the bush, otherwise they risk going the day without water for their household. Snakes and other dangerous reptiles often hate in the wells. If you wake up 3 to 4 and come, maybe some snake will come from 3 and 4 inside the water. We will we'll run back to the house and call them to come and kill it before we can get water and fed. The absence of portable water exposed the people to varying waterborne diseases. The diarrhea diseases, we are talking of cholera. We are talking of uh, diarrhea itself, dysentery, typhoid fever, uh, polio malitis, and all this is where okay. rampant in the community. Children's education also affected as the search for water culminated in lateness to school during the period. We find it difficult. Sometimes we use about half of an hour before getting the water. We do to that. When we go to school, we are tired. Because of no water, they will go and uh, crowd themselves in the river. They don't have time to go to school early. The people can now heave a sigh of relief as World Vision has come to their rescue. The root causes of poverty, poverty amongst our people is lack of access to safe drinking water. I know and I can tell you, I have seen the witnesses, portable water can bring to children their learning outcomes. A borehole has now been drilled for the community. I am very happy that we'll be in the house, do all your house work before coming to fetch water. Because of well vision, the students are not going to school late again. The women can have time now, they have time to support their husbands on the farm because they need to prepare food and do all these things and go to the farm also to help them on the farm. Municipal Chief Executive for Krachi East, Patrick Chati Jilemi, was delighted over the intervention. He urged the people to own the facility and properly manage it. <laughs> And the Echimakwauma district in the Ashanti region has handed over a six-unit classroom block to the Akunsom DA basic school. Prior to the intervention, teaching and learning had to be conducted under sheds constructed with roofing sheets. We'll bring you that story later. You're still watching Midi Live. To some more stories, and Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ebenezer Udro Owusu, has called on universities to recognize the role of their alumni while they rethink the management styles and embrace new financing and governance modules. He said this when he addressed a program dubbed Ghana Beyond Aid, Education and Human Capital at the University of Ghana here in Accra. The conference reflected the Ghana Beyond Aid initiative with a vision of creating a wealthy, inclusive, sustainable, empowered and resilient Ghana. Key in the realization of the vision is addressing the subject of education and human capital. According to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ebenezer Odrousu, alumni and philanthropists who are linked to the university play a significant role in the institution's financing and governance mechanisms. Finance is, is a very big barrier to education. Now, from where I sit, I don't think it should be. Now, if we have somebody who is brilliant, willing and interested to learn, I believe the person must have access to education without necessarily having to have the money in his or her pocket before assessing. That is the reason we need to have an endowment fund. So the endowment fund would take care of students of that category who have the ability, the potential to go through but are hindered in a way or the other by finances. Speaking on behalf of the senior minister, a senior government policy advisor, Dr. Yao Ansu, hinted of some measures that have been implemented towards the Ghana Beyond Aid vision. They passed the law, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, that says that the deficit would not be more than 5%. There's a cleanup of the banks that have weeded out all the, uh, the banks that were 
not doing so well so that now we have a stronger uh, financial sector. There's a very determined effort to strengthen the revenue organizations. There's a free SHS program that's preparing our youth to have the, uh, the skills that make them very productive in the uh, uh, workplace. It's also the uh, TVET and also a number of industrialization programs that government is formulating and is coming through. The UG at 70 alumni homecoming event was graced by statesmen and top political figures in the country. I'm on education. 22 female students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have been selected as Whitaker Foundation scholars. The scholarship scheme was instituted two decades ago to motivate female students pursuing physics to strive for academic excellence. Here's a report by Benjamin Edu. The KC Whitaker Endowment Fund was established in 1997 to offer scholarships to financially challenged female students to pursue courses in physics. Since 1998, the fund has granted scholarships to over 140 female physics students. The current set of 22 beneficiary students will be awarded a total of 44,000 cities. The foundation is hoping to increase the number of beneficiaries to help bridge the gap between male and female students. A trustee of the scholarship, Solomon Kwanzi, said the fund will continue to assist undergraduate and MPhil students in fulfillment of the wishes of the late Rose Whitaker. Provost of the College of Science, KNUST, Professor Ibog Odro, noted the scholarship would help more women to pursue careers in the sciences. Other students from the College of Science also received awards from the College's Excellence Awards. Now to healthcare, and the country could experience a crisis as the National Blood Service is running out of stock. A senior blood donor recruiter, Joyce Opong Edu, who made this known, said the National Centre is currently unable to meet half of the daily requirements of up to 200 units by the Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra. The National Blood Service supplies the Kolebu Teaching Hospital between 150 and 200 units of blood each day. Daily requirements from other hospitals and health facilities nationwide goes beyond 300 units. However, current blood stock level at the blood service showed less than half of daily requirements of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. The current situation at the blood bank right now is that we don't have enough blood and it's a bit worse now. The reality is that Ghanaians are not willing to donate blood voluntarily in spite of years of public campaigns and sensitizations. A senior blood donor recruiter at the National Blood Service, Joyce Opongedu, blamed the development of myths, misconception and mindset of Ghanaians. There are some misconceptions that people have. We should know that blood donation is a safe process. There are also benefits of the blood donation. You have frequent check of your health and then you also have fresh production of blood in you when you donate and you get a donor card or a certificate that shows that you're a donor. And if you don't know your blood group, you also get to know your blood group through the blood donation. She used the 27th Annual Evangelical Presbyterian Church Christian Youth Builders Blood Donations at Mimpalsem near Ligon, Accra, to call for public reawakening. We need just 1% of the Ghanaian population to donate blood to overcome this shortage of blood. You know, you can donate every four months, that's let's say three times in a year. But if everyone would donate at least once in a year. The exercise on the theme Save a Life was targeted to mobilize at least 250 units of blood. The West Volta Presbyterian Secretary of the EP Church, Cynthia MFA Asigbeche, urged the public to donate regularly to save lives. If there is no blood, there is a lot of challenges. Ghanaians should take the blood donation as something to save life. Like how we've done today, maybe it should be like three, four groups or churches or corporate bodies should also donate the same day. Other than that, we can't meet the targets. One blood donation and management and staff of the whole teaching hospital say the facility is grappling with an adequate blood stock at its blood bank. Currently, the blood bank has only 30 units of blood, which is woefully inadequate for a teaching hospital. 
According to management and staff, the blood bank is supposed to have 250 to 300 pints of blood. However, the facility has 25 pints. The inadequate blood at the facility makes it difficult for the teaching hospital to transfer blood to various facilities anytime they are in need. The Volta Region branch of Ghana Food and Drugs Authority has meanwhile organized a blood donation exercise to support the whole teaching hospital blood bank. The Volta Region's blood donor organizer, Vincent Svekbe, appealed to residents of the area to inculcate the habit of voluntary blood donation to show its blood stock. If somebody is honest and then gives you something free, at least when the person is going away, you must also say thank you. Yes, so we need the support of organizations, state institutions to come on board to help us get adequate motivation for our voluntary blood business. The blood bank also lacks adequate staff to efficiently manage the units. The officer in charge of Volta Region FDA, Gordon Akurugo, disclosed that his outfits organize the blood donation to support patients with critical conditions. You're still watching Media Live. We'll be back shortly. Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Media Live. Let's look at some business stories. And the governor of the Bank of Ghana has explained that the dwindling financial state of the National Investment Bank is not out of control. He explains that with adequate managerial structures, the state bank should be running smoothly soon. What is the state of NIB? NIB, as you know, is a state bank. Uh, it has issues with capital, it has issues with uh, non-performing loans because a lot of the loans were not granted uh, through the you know, proper channels. The risk management there wasn't very good. Uh, we have sent in advi an advisor to look at, you know, look at that bank and advise the central bank on, on the way forward. Mm -hmm. It, it seems clear that if we redefine the objectives for NIB, the management there should be able to turn it around as an efficient universal bank. Is that what you see? Well, because the, the, the company, the bank is saddled with a lot of problems. Like you said, MPLs. They, they, do, have, they do have some problems, but these are surmountable. These are not problems that cannot be resolved. And business confidence for the second quarter of 2019 shot up from 99.8% to 103.2% according to the Association of Ghana Industries Business Barometer. The 3.5 percentage point increase was attributed to specific business reforms and interventions by the central bank. The surge in both business and consumer confidence reflects increased economic activity indicating actual economic growth. We urge the government to look at the revenue leakages that is being had, had, I mean, happening in the country, as well as also look at widening the tax net that the government have been taken, talking about over these years. In spite of the upsurge in business confidence, the cost of electricity stood out as a main challenge for businesses in the second quarter of 2019. In that regard, AGI wants government to prioritize policy interventions towards accelerating growth in the industrial sector. We reckon that it is fair to set the utility tariffs reasonably enough to recover the economic cost by investors in the energy sector and replace the price subsidies. However, we still urge PURC to reconsider the practice where we industrial companies, we are still paying and subsidizing residential consumers in Ghana. The cost of raw materials and the city's stabilization against major international trading currencies also stood out as major challenges for the business community, particularly manufacturers and the consequent operating costs they incur. 
the business barometer is a measurement of the statistical mean of situation and expectation in the service, construction and manufacturing sectors. So some of stories and proliferation of betting centers in Ghana has no doubt created job opportunities for Ghanaians, but its advert effects on the youth has been identified as a major challenge. Ama Titebie Siama has more. Sports betting includes making predictions about football matches in the top leagues of Europe. Participants place bets on the outcomes of games which, if successful, result in a win of thousands of cities. It gained popularity in Ghana following growing interest in foreign leagues as the fortunes of Ghana's football league dwindled. The trend is catching on with a lot of the youth who see it as a quick means of making cash. I was compelled to go into betting uh, during a desperate time. B. So I had some disposable amount on me that I thought, okay, my friends who are into the betting are making it, so why don't I just get them to share their odds with me to betting. Okay, so we started and initially we won something. I've not betted before and I don't even feel like betting because I see most of my friends betting and yeah, I'm putting in much money and they losing all those monies. So I just don't have the you know guys to just go in and put much money into the betting something and losing all. And I More than half of patrons at sports betting centers are students, most of whom use their feeding or school fees to gamble. The concept of sport betting or football betting became very popular with the advent of the European League. So many young people felt comfortable to associate themselves with these uh, football teams. Advertising companies also align some of these football sponsorship. So that's where most of the companies into betting started using football. They realized that I mean, the, the, young, the young people are able to congregate watch these Premier Leagues at places with most of their bars. So when they go to these places, some of them use the opportunity to also bet. According to him, most students tend to lose concentration while at lectures, producing poor results at the end of the academic year and losing their educational integrity in the process. I have, in many situations, cautioned students in my class who spend the whole two hours you are teaching on their phones doing betting. And the truth is that the person leaves the class and doesn't know anything you have said. Then the person writes an examination and gets an E1F. An then this student will come and tell you in the office that, oh, you gave me an F. Mental illness, addiction to the game, depression, and many more aside the excitement associated with winning are some of the psychological effects of betting. It becomes a problem when it, it recurs. So when the person does it persistently and doesn't win, then there's that um, possibility of the person going on that um, slippery road. Countless people determined to wager only a small amount of money or try their hands on sports betting are unable to escape the addiction. Well, in the game of chance, you either win or lose and patrons have to face consequences thereof. Away from business, let's look at um, some more stories and we stay in the Doma East District where the imposition of doctrines on pupils has dwindled the enrollment at the 157th Day Adventist School in the Bono region. Stalini Blewu has more in the story. The Seventh Day Adventist Basic School is one of the academic institutions providing formal education to pupils in Wamfie, the capital of the Doma East District. The school, being one of the mission learning institutions adopted by government, is located in a strategic area in the Wamfie Township and has trained teachers posted to teach them. Teaching and learning has improved, especially at the lower primary due to the usage of the local dialect known as L1 in the teaching process. However, enrollment, I am told, has dwindled because earlier authorities of the school imposed the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on the pupils. The doctrine forbids females from wearing earrings to school. When they come, the teachers who were Adventists in the school used to ask them to remove their year ranks and other doctrines that they don't compromise with the other churches. Uh, so I think this compared the parents to take their words away from here. Because we don't have a romance, we sometimes take the underage people so that uh, we can bring them up and then we use them to finish the KG1 and 2. 
the school was then compelled to rescind its decision with female pupils now allowed to wear earrings to school. The head teacher, George Chumisi, is confident with the current crop of teachers posted to the school, things will change. The teachers have been cooperative for the attendance. They have been coming to school all the time and they are doing their best. As I said, for now there has been progress. The school is now struggling to increase its enrollment, but it faces other challenges. Parts of buildings serving as classrooms have deteriorated, endangering the lives of users. Already, a portion has collapsed. Other classroom blocks have equally not been renovated. The SDA church has ceded two of its pews for use by KG pupils, however, they do not support writing. The district assembly provided a three-unit classroom block for the SDA Junior High School after benefiting from the HIPIC program. The district chief executive Emmanuel Kofi Ajman said the assembly has plans to improve infrastructure in the district. You're still watching Midday Live with me, Wendy Lai. Do stay. And the good news is that Onya Television and Akuma 87.9 FM have officially been welcomed onto the Media General platform. Launching the two stations, Group CEO of Media General Beatrice Ajiman Abe assured viewers the new platform will offer them nothing but quality impactful and exciting content. Also, Rai reports of amazing performances from some top musicians at the launch. The Heroes Park in Asokwa was the center of attraction as the media general conglomerates officially birthed two new stations, Urnia TV and Akoma 87.9 FM. On this note, I duly launch the two stations, Onya TV and Akuma FM. So bring you more on that on News 360. So watch and listen to the best in the Ashanti region and across the country as well. And that'll be all for this afternoon. I am Wendy Lai. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of our programs. News 360 is at 7.